This is the fifth day of me making a roguelike game in one week and making a devlog video every day. So far, we've got the player movement, a bunch of enemies, random level generation and some juicy graphics. Today, I worked on making a menu screen, a health system and finalising the game loop. The game by itself is pretty simple and so I want to keep this menu screen pretty basic as well. Also, I don't have time to make it look good, so yeah. I started off with writing out the name of the game, which is incredibly descriptive and accurate, and also adding a wiggly, rotating triangle boy in the corner, because why the heck not? Next up was a play button, a credits button, and an exit button. When you hover over them, it shines blue to indicate that they're interactable, and then when you press them, it fades out into the corresponding scene. I quickly slapped together a credit scene, giving a bit of info on how I made the game and some buttons that link me to my social media. Also, the middle of the screen here was looking a bit empty, like my soul, and so I decided to write out the controls of the game. Cool. Beans. Now, when you click on the play button, it brings you directly into the first floor of the game. I wrote out a little message here to let the player know what they're supposed to do, which is pretty much just killing shapes, and that was all working well. Except, as the player, you could not die. And that really crinkles my fax paper. I made some hearts to go on the top left of the screen, and this is just to tell the player how many more hits they can take before they are out of here. Surprisingly, this took a lot more code than I thought it would because I had to handle different timings and states, but the health system as a whole is working pretty well. Whenever you get hit by an enemy, you are invincible for about half a second and so you can dash away or just escape to, you know, get away from the enemies. And whenever you get hit, you also get this particle effect out of the player. Finally, we have more death. I love death, but there is actually a distinct lack of death at the moment, because if you lose all your hearts, the game just crashes. So now when you die, the screen fades out and brings you to the death menu. It's, um, well, it's something, but there is a bit more that I could do to just make you feel that bit worse. So I added some text right under the red title and it randomly chooses a very encouraging and helpful message. I really love doing this for games and even though it probably makes you want to stop playing it, um, oh well, it's my game, not yours, so shut your face. Here is a list of all of the highly supportive nodes if you are wondering. The game loop is almost complete. You can start up the game from the menu, play through it, and when you die, you can restart or return to the menu. That's pretty cool, but if you get to the end of the level and defeat all the enemies, nothing really happens. I already had a system in place that detected when all of the enemies in a room had been defeated, and it would open up the barriers to the next room. But once you get to that last part of the level, there is no room to go to. So I simply modified this function and instead moved the player to the next floor. Except it just went back to floor 1. That's um, yeah, no, that ain't right. So when you defeat the last enemies, it does actually reset the scene, but there's a bunch of code that just ups everything by 1. The floor number is increased and also the difficulty increases. On floor 1, there will be 3 rooms and 3 enemies per room. Floor 2 will have 4 rooms and 4 enemies in each, Floor 3 will have 5 rooms and 5 enemies in each, and so on. Basically, the number of rooms and the number of enemies in each room is the same, and they're equal to the current floor number plus 2. The game loop is now all done. This took a lot of time, and it's not something that you think too much, but a game really doesn't work without it. The last thing I did today was fix an issue that I've had with the design for a while, and that is that you can just sit in the corner and shoot enemies for as long as you want. This feels kind of cheaty, and it's honestly just not very fun, and so I decided to change up how the shooting system worked. You now start each run with 20 bullets. This is quite a lot, but you can lose them pretty easily just by shooting and playing the game as normal, and so you already have to be quite conservative with them. You also gain 2 bullets for each enemy killed, whether that's by dashing through them or shooting them from a distance. Dashing is a lot more dangerous, as you can get closer to other enemies without realising it, but you might have to resort to it if you run out of bullets. See what I did there? I did a smart game design move. Who would have thought? To finish this whole thing off, I put a score on the end screen which just shows the floor that you got up to and how many enemies you killed. And that's the game done on day 5, however there is no music or sound effects which you might not have even noticed up to this point because I've just had background music in these videos. But tomorrow I will be making a bopping music track and some other sound effects to go with it. Thank you very much for watching and a very special thank you to my supporters over on Patreon, especially DerpyDino35, DiamondDev and Gunst. Thank you and I will see you all in tomorrow's devlog video.